So everybody's on board. Uh, one minute is passed from 11. That's not a big delay. So I think that we are uh, quite on time. I mean, 11, of course, uh, here in Brussels. I know it is uh, yes. uh, uh, for four and a half hours uh, later in, um, in India. And uh, in uh, Dhaka, uh, I think it is uh, aligned with, uh, with India as well. So for half uh, an hour, yeah. Yeah, for half an hour. Yes, exactly. So uh, five hours in, uh, in Dhaka. So uh, four and a half hours after in, um, in the whole of India. Well, uh, this is our annual most important conference because uh, this is uh, the most interesting and the most profound and the most innovative uh, research that I think was uh, um, done by SADF in 2020. That was, as you all know, uh, a very special year. Tabligi, uh, Tabligi Jamat. Um, actually, it is um, most likely, uh, you know, because you don't have papers, but uh, most likely, if it's not the biggest, it's certainly the second biggest uh, organization, um, Islamic organization in the, in the world, but it's very, very badly known in Europe. Um, and uh, we, uh, it's very strong, it came from South Asia, it's very strong in India, it's very strong in Bangladesh, it's uh, very strong in Pakistan, uh, but not in Europe. And so, uh, Dr. Siegfried Wolf, um, uh, there was a very recent uh, report on Tablig Jamaat um, produced by uh, German intelligence that gave rise to uh, a, an awareness on Europe of uh, uh, what is this organization about, how shall we look at it, and to have different perspectives. Uh, and uh, so Dr. Siegfried Wolf, he was, and he is by far our greatest specialist on uh, this sort of uh, organizations. He is the main contributor to this uh, policy brief we just produced and published. And uh, we are at SADF, we are very, very proud of it. We know that it uh, bothers a lot of people, which is natural. Uh, when you um, do the right thing, when you touch the sensible spots, well, you, all, you have a lot of reactions. Um, but, um, you know, this is part of life. Um, there is nothing. Uh, there is, of course, uh, if you produce nothing or if you just say uh, common banalities uh, that um, are any unimportant, of course, that nobody is going against you because you did not affect the interests of nobody. But when you do affect, well, you might be sure that people uh, will react. And then, well, that's life. Um, we are not surprised. We count on these things. That's the way things uh, normally are. So our webinar will start by a presentation by uh, Dr. Siegfried Wolf. And then we have two eminent uh, specialists uh, coming from South Asia. One um, is coming, the first one is coming from India. He is uh, uh, the, the national president of the Sufi Islamic Board. Um, he uh, is uh, Mr. Mansur Khan. Um, he is, by his own position, uh, a great specialist on Islam. He is representing... Um, the Sufi uh, Islamic uh, tradition that is, well, very badly known uh, in um, all over the world, but I would say especially in Europe, people do not know what it is. People say a lot of, uh, of things that are not true, uh, and we are very glad that uh, he accepted our invitation and that he is coming to give some clarifications on this debate on, on this very distorted vision than that most of the Europeans has on, um, on Islam. And then uh, we will have uh, Professor uh, Mohammed Bubu Ashraf Siddiqui. He's an associate professor on the Department of Political Science and Sociology at uh, North South University. Um, he is um, speaking to us from Dhaka, Bangladesh, you know, after. Uh, India and together with Pakistan, Bangladesh is perhaps the country 
and United Kingdom, uh, where this organization is uh, more developed. He is author of a book, um, and that's why we decided to invite him, you know, because uh, uh, I have to confess to you that uh, your book is absolutely outstanding. Uh, and I read it, you know, from when I started reading, I could not stop reading it. Uh, and I did learn a lot about, not only about uh, this, uh, the, the, the tabligi, but a lot about uh, uh, Islam, well, the colonization process um, uh, in um, Bangladesh, or what is now Bangladesh, what used to be uh, Bengal, uh, by by Islam, how it happened, the different streams, the different currents, uh, it's very fascinating. Um, it reads, you know, uh, uh, with a lot of interest. I really would uh, recommend you, uh, without any restrictions, to to go for your book uh, that is published by uh, by Springer, um, and uh, uh, of course that uh, you will give uh, a perspective from Bangladesh and of course uh, as well because I think you are a specialist on the organization so you can uh, broad uh, your uh, perspective on uh, on the issue um, so this is it um, thank you so much for accepting to um, come to our webinar and uh, to um, all of those who are following us uh, thank you very much for your presence uh, I think uh, you will not regret to be present. Uh, I would give now the floor to uh, uh, Dr. Siegfried Wolf. Please, the floor is yours. Yeah, dear Paulo, thank you very much for your kind word of introduction. And, and it's uh, a pleasure to be with uh, Professor Siddiqui and Mr. Hahn on this panel. And, and I'm also very pleased that we have such a large online auditorium. Um, I also want to say thank you that I can share my views with you on the Tablighi Chamat. And as Paolo mentioned, it's the outcome of a research project SEDF conducted during the last months. And um, the research findings are based on an analysis of uh, public available international and especially European intelligence reports as well as, of course, academic and journalistic sources. To start, we must realize that in Europe, the public discourse on jihadi terrorism mostly revolves around terrorist organizations and their international militant networks. Meanwhile, officially nonviolent groups have managed to escape the scrutiny of the uh, political decision makers. One of the most remarkable examples is uh, Tablighi Chamat, a transnational Islamic missionary movement. I guess we hear more in detail later by Professor Siddiqui. Um, since years, this group, known for being dedicated to a rigid conservative interpretation of Islam, is under surveillance of international intelligence agencies. But the alarming reports are getting apparently disregarded by European governments. This ignorance regarding the propagation of an Islamic supremacist agenda facilitates the Tablighi Chamat function as an Islamic supremacist agenda and as a driving force for Islamic extremism and the major recruiting agency for the cause of the global jihad. The organization bluntly threatens societies based on liberal and democratic norms, despite its relative clandestine character. There are indications that the Tablighi Chamat is extremely effective at spreading Islamic fundamentalism. Furthermore, experts point out that Tablighis have appeared on the fringe of several terrorist, terrorist investigations, leading some to state that its apolitical stance simply masks the fertile ground for breeding terrorism. The Tablighi Chamat is seen as an essential component of a phenomenon which the French political sociologist Bernard Rocher calls 
an Islamist ecosystem. We believe this concept is most useful to understand the role that the Tablighi Jamaat plays in the global jihad. The movement is officially apolitical and prefers word of mouth instructions to public written or online communiques. Thus, the Tablighi Jamaat has there here therefore flown largely under the analytical radar. This stands in sharp contrast with other pan-Islamic groups, for example, the Muslim Brotherhood. Over the years, as the Tablighi Jamaat grew in membership and influence, its traditional structure was strengthened by additional resources and leaders and, in fact, gained the framework necessary for creating a global network. Subsequently, the movement has expanded from local to national and into a transnational movement. It is reported that the Tablighi Jamaat operates in at least 165 countries. Some estimation are even higher, up to 200 countries. This significant leverage not only in several majority Muslim, but also in Muslim majority countries in the West as well. With tens of millions of followers, the Tablighi Jamaat is today the largest Islamic globally operating movement. In this context, it seems perhaps obvious that the Tablighi Jamaat aims to recruit as many followers as possible. This is important because of the Tablighi Jamaat's recruitment process and the secrecy surrounding its internal structure, like the culture of closed door meetings of the leadership of the Tablighi. Moreover, it is argued that the group, for all the mystics that surrounds it, has been diligent and today, with a growing presence in the West, it is viewed by anxious critics as a kind of Trojan horse of Islamic fundamentalism. Furthermore, the Tablighis possess a scant regard for the logic of loyalties of national territory. This can, of course, become a challenge for the integration of Tablighis in host countries. Policy analysts and Islamist scholars are fiercely divided in the assessment of the Tablighi Jamaat. On one side, some scholars denounce a priori any tie between the Tablighi Jamaat and terrorism and stress that Tablighi implicated in terrorist activities represent a, a minuscule percentage of the movement. On the other side, there's a growing number of experts state that there is clear evidence that the Tablighi Jamaat as an organization is linked to global jihadism. Despite this debate about the real nature of the Tablighi Jamaat and its massive expansion, this movement hardly gets government suspicion in Western countries. As I already mentioned or indicated, the Tablighi Jamaat can be seen as a component of a phenomenon which Bernard Rocher calls an Islamist ecosystem. His example involves a network established in French suburbs, which links schools, mosques, sport halls, shops, and even prisons. The Tablighi Jamaat conducts initial preaching that paved the way by bringing young people back to Islam before they now interested in the things of faith turn to a more learned version of Islam. As such, the learned version contributes to the expansion of ecosystem resources, which in turn feeds to cheer this dynamic, providing its fighters with a logical and material basis legitimizing the fight against the global society. 
Preachers and recruiters from the Tablighi Jamaat deployed there to detect weak spirits capable of forming the first line of the so-called holy war. The Tablighis are sometimes seen as oscillating on an ideological continuum between moderate and radical positions, between the Tablighi Jamaat as an organization and militant Shiites groups. This ecosystem does not advocate armed struggle on French soil, as well as in other countries with the uh, Tablighi Jamaat presence, but maintains a logic of rupture with global society and its institutions. This rupture is then exploited by the theological and political arguments of the jihadists. In other words, joining the Tablighi Jamaat could turn out to be the first step on the road to extremism. Regarding Fahan Sahid, a scholar who describes the Tamat, uh, Tablighi Jamaat as a system driver and integral, uh, integral element of jihadist, violent, non-state actors' internal dynamics. Furthermore, he identifies the Tablighi Jamaat as an agent responsible for Islamist activities, which acts in many cases as a nursery for indoctrinating Islamist terrorists. By observing this phenomenon, it does not come by surprise that the Tablighi Jamaat come into the focus of European intelligence agencies, foremost, as Paula already mentioned, the German Federal Bureau of, for the Protection of the Constitution and its counterparts on the state level, the French General Directorate for International, Internal Security, the Portuguese Intelligence and Security Service, the General Intelligence and Security Service of the Netherlands, and several others. The major concerns of these European intelligence agencies are the rejection of secular principles and the demarcation from non-Muslims through the Tablighi Jamaat can lead to the formation of close parallel societies and at least passively promote individual radicalization processes. The successful personalization efforts of the Tablighi Jamaat often initiates a visible change in the social behavior of the recruits. The rejection of Western values can have a socio-political disintegration effect in non-Muslim countries and contribute to the emergence of parallel societies. This can promote individual radicalization processes and thus create the condition for a further slide into a potential terrorist environment. The overarching visions of the Tablighi Jamaat draw additional attention by the intelligence services, namely its long-term goals to establish an Islamist regime and make Sharia law universal. From the Tablighi Jamaat's perspective, this requires a comprehensive Islamization of the host country's societies. The purpose of the whole Tablighi Jamaat activities is to achieve the transformation of the society shaped by Western values into an Islamic form of society. Here, the agencies are concerned that the notion of an Islamic society, societal transition could also extend to jihadist ideas. German intelligence sees a threat potential in the pursuit of an exemplary practice of fate in the sense that the Tablighi Jamaat includes a largely verbatim and rigid interpretation of the Quran and its legislation, 
so that the fulfillment of religious regulation is given priority in principle over a way of life based on state law. Thus, the Tabliki Chamat's ideology, especially propagating Sharia law on the basis of its social model, contradicts essentially democratic principles, in particular that of the separation of state and religion. This includes the application of the provisions of classical Islamic procedural law, classical Islamic law of marriage and divorce, and the so-called hard penalties, for example, the flodging of offenders, which are not only incompatible, but directed against the liberal democrat democratic basic order of Germany, or in German, the Demokratische Freiheitliche Grundordnung. Furthermore, the image of woman represented by the Tabligi Chamat, largely expressed in the social exclusion of women, cannot be reconciled with Germany's constitutional principle. The Term Intelligence Agency stressed further that various investigative procedures and trials in recent years have clearly shown that the one-sided interpretation of Islamic sources with the aim of aligning the behavior of an individual Muslim strictly according to Islamic standards can, in individual cases, lead to an intensive transfer of ideology. The vast scope of interpretation of the movement's ideology makes the emergence of the jihadist or of a jihadist orientation within the Tabligi Jamaat in principle possible. The French intelligence is sharing most of the German concerns. It classifies the Tabligi Jamaat as apolitical, but also states that the movement constitutes a reservoir of individuals in total break with society. In other words, the Tabligis are advocating a logic of rupture with French society and often sets the stage for radicalization. According to one estimate, perhaps 80% of Islamist extremists have come from Tabligi ranks, prompting French intelligence officers to call the Tabligi Chamat as the antechamber of fundamentalism. The General Intelligence and Security Service of the Netherlands identifies a new phase in the development of Islamic radicalization in Europe related to the presence of the Tabligi Chamat, encouraging the rise of Islamic neo radicalization. Based on public available information collected by the Swiss intelligence agency and the Swiss Federal Office of Police, the Tabligi Chamat is described in regard to Islamist-inspired violent radicalization as most commonly being considered gateway organization. In Portugal too, the Tabligi Chamat became the focus of the country's intelligence and security service, the SIS. They have identified links between individuals residing in the country and radical Islamic operatives within the ideological network of Al-Qaeda, as well as logistical and support activities for terrorism. According to SIS sources, Besides the organization structures and monitoring individuals, especially the travels abroad, the Tabligi Chabad funding has constituted one of the most important points of SIS surveillance. Actually, this funding constitutes a major cause for concern among observers of the Tabligi Chabad, and this for several reasons. Firstly, 
there are contradictions between the Tablighi leadership official rhetoric as regards the funding of missionary tours and gathering abroad of its adherents. On one side, the Tablighi Chamat claims that members are responsible for covering expenditures themselves. On the other side, it is reported that Tablighi Chamat offers financial support for such travel activities. For example, scholar Marc Gabriel, referring to investigations by the French police, points out that Tablighi Chamat funded trips to Pakistan by unemployed young Muslims. This differs from the Tablighi Chamat's principle of self-financing self -financing called courage, which is supposed to be an inherent characteristic of the Tablighis. Furthermore, the movement appears to hold enormous financial resources in this context. Secondly, the Tablighi Chamat is apparently averse to financially uh, and banking records. Thus, the Tablighi Chamat does not use formal banking channels so as to avoid any scrutiny of its funds. It seems to rely instead of the informal Havala money transfer system based on transaction in cash. Certainly, funding sources remain anonymous and there is no accessible data regarding the numbers or profiles of those who donate to Tablighi Chamat offices and centers. Here it is interesting to note that Intel Italian intelligence and law enforcing agencies suspect that the cultural center of the movement as well as individuals in the country are involved in collecting and or transferring money to fund jihadist activities abroad. During its investigation, the police detected an illegal funding network with ties to Pakistani sources, not only running associations and activities in Italy, but also maintaining links to Tablighi Chamat. Otherwise, there have been several instances of violent Islamists who started their path with the Tablighi. Tablighi Chamat's activities and the subsequent role it plays within the Islamist ecosystem ensures that jihadist organizations do not have, have an export jihadism and Islamism anymore from Pakistan or other South Asian countries to Europe and North America, since the work on the field is already accomplished. Actually, it can be stated that this Islamist ecosystem works in two directions. One direction can be said to evolve from outside Tablighi Chamat to the infiltration of Tablighi Chamat gatherings and activities, followed by manipulation and recruitment of Tablighi. Another operates from inside the Tablighi Chamat by preaching an ultra conservative interpretation of Islam. Here, Tablighi provides not only an intellectual platform, but also a course of action which may result in acts of terrorism. Both dynamics are mutually reinforcing. The problem of Tablighi Chamat's ambiguity creates an enabling environment in which individuals may find jihadism appealing and ultimately become terrorists. This ambiguity can also be described as an attempt to keep a neutral position between the different camps and positions. This neutrality gives Tablighi flexibility to deny the responsibility regarding terrorist cases conducted by its members or former members. Furthermore, it helps to cultivate the image of being apolitical and peaceful blurring the line regarding as to which degree Tablighi Chamat supports jihad and the implementation of Sharia law. 
At the same time, this supports the public efforts to portray, portray themselves to the host governments as a moderate force able to counterbalance radicalization among Muslim communities, especially here in Europe. This can also lead to severe consequences foremost grievances and frustrations among Tabligi. Here, the interaction between radicalized elements and an organization like Tabligi Jamaat can be, can be influential in provoking sentiments of frustration in which the more active means and ideologies of the militants may become of interest for some Tabligis. Such experiences can create a situation in which Tabligi Jamaat might start serving as a front for terrorist groups, either intentionally or unintentionally. Consequently, as an essential part of the Islamic ecosystem, Tabligi Jamaat function as an engine that supports jihadist aims to produce terrorism directly on the soil of target countries. Indeed, to some experts, the neutrality of Tabligi is enough to make them culpable. To sum up, the preaching and teaching of the Tabligi Jamaat go far beyond the rejection of Western value systems it makes Tabligis and the adherents susceptible to Islamist positioning and serves as a gateway for the creation of jihadist milieus. As such, one can or must state that we are witnessing Tabligi and jihadist working in a kind of tandem within the symbiotic network of an Islamist ecosystem enhancing the threat for international terrorism and global jihadism. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, unmute. <laughs> Thank you so much, Siegfried. Um, I think it was, uh, you know, when we started to, to uh, look at the scenery, it is absolutely amazing because uh, you have uh, the anti-terrorist forces uh, everywhere in Europe. I mean, we looked at uh, four countries, France, Germany, uh, Netherlands and Portugal. Um, but it's not exclusive from these countries. The anti-terrorist forces are saying, listen, this is a big problem. But then you have the establishment. The establishment uh, doesn't want to make waves. The establishment silences. Uh, the establishment uh, here in Brussels quite in particular, uh, hides everything and puts things upside down. Um, sometimes because uh, the main problem of uh, Westerners, Europeans and Americans, as, as, I, as I, I learned, you know, is that they don't make the faintest idea of what Islam is. They don't know. They think they know. They got into uh, schools of indoctrination by Islamists, uh, telling them their version of Islam, of course, um, that uh, they think that they know a lot. Uh, uh, look at finances, uh, universities in the United States or in Europe, United Kingdom in particular, you will understand the result. It's not uh, education. It is uh, exactly the contrary. It is um, obfuscation. It is preventing the people to understand what they are dealing with. And I do believe for a very long time that the key issue lies here uh, in, for instance, understanding Sufism. Uh, and we are so privileged to have uh, among us such uh, a, prestigious, a prestigious person as uh, uh, Mr. Siddiqui, the national president of the Sufi Islamic Board. He is uh, coming uh, to us to explain a bit how is it and to give us a bit of light uh, on... Uh, uh, what uh, it is, uh, Islam, and that actually Islam is not necessarily tabligi, is not uh, uh, is not violence, is not Sharia, is uh, the Sharia. They, 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 it's very different, you know. And uh, um, and uh, when this uh, 
appeasement mentality, say, oh, yeah, we, we are not going against the Muslims. They are actually going against the most of the Muslims that are normal people and that uh, see things differently. But they, they don't understand this. I did. I did understand the hard way, you know, uh, going through Muslim countries, uh, being in a, my life is full of it, you know, and to understand the people. But these people don't understand. They don't know. They just know the, the ones who are sent by the Islamist organizations. So they don't know what they are speaking about. That's the problem. Okay, don't take more of your time. The floor is entirely yours now. Mr. Khan, please. Thank you, Paulo. Uh, from the land of the fragrance of Iman, I send greetings to all the dignitaries participating in this webinar on the platform of South Asia Democratic Forum. I would like to extend my gratitude to all the members of SADF organization for giving me an opportunity to be a part of this thought-provoking webinar. I am representing my organization Sufi Islamic Board of which I am the national president in India. To uh, understand today's topic of this webinar, which is Tablighi Jamaat and its role in global terrorism, we will have to go into the reasons which created this ideology of hate in the history of Islam. The crux of this fundamental Islamic history lies in the history of Islam some 1400 years ago, at the base of which is a very powerful ruler of Mecca by the name of Abu Sufyan, whose family comprises of Abu Sufyan, his wife Hinda, their son Mavia, and Mavia's son Yazid. To understand this conflict in a better way, uh, between the Prophet uh, and his companions of the Sufa and Abu Sufyan and his family briefly, I would like to give some examples. Abu Sufyan had waged war against Prophet Muhammad many times from Mecca to Medina. Hinda had eaten the raw heart of Hazrat Hamza, who was the beloved uncle of Prophet Muhammad after the war in Ohad. Mavia had waged war against Hazrat Ali more than 50 times and was also instrumental in poisoning of Hazrat Hassan salam, the elder grandson of Prophet Muhammad Yazid had called Hazrat Hussain salam, at Karbala for a peace conference and betrayed and martyred him and his whole family at Karbala, in which a child, Janab Ali Azgar, of six months was also killed. So this dispute at the base of Islamic history is basically a fight between the good and the evil, where the good is represented by the family of the Prophet uh, and his co uh, close companions, and the evil is represented by Abu Sufyan and his family and their followers. Till date, both these groups exist and call themselves Muslims. But one group represents love and peace, while the other represents hate and chaos. From the early history till date, this conflict is the base of fundamental Islamic ideology. People who follow Prophet Muhammad and his family and his close companions are the peace-loving and are always attacked by the people who follow Abu Sufyan and his family and uh, the sympathizers also. These people have always been the preparators of fundamental Islamic history or ideology, which we know nowadays uh, and which is uh, quite prominent throughout the world. All terrorist organizations such as Al-Qaeda, the ISIS, the IHH, and many other organizations of the world part, part form of this ideology. Tablighi Jamaat is also one such organization which follows the fundamental Islamic ideology. 
the ideology that the tablighi jamaat follows revolves around the theme that they are the sole protectors of allah and the quran instead of surrendering to god and seeking its protection they make programs as if god is in danger and only their agenda will save it they do everything which is diametrically opposite to the quran and its meanings towards humanity the tablighi jamaat was formed in the early 19th century with a mission to misguide the people of united india who were until then the followers of sufi saints and whose lives revolved around the preachings of the mystical islam whose roots were fixed in values of love peace inclusiveness humanity and spirituality these uh, values were the foundation of unity among the masses and therefore these groups they prepared an agenda to distort these values and to divide the masses into small fragments to suit their agenda of creating chaos from 1919 to 1924 there was a khilafat movement led by shaukat ali and maulana mohammad ali johar and others to restore the khilafat of the ottoman empire as an effective political authority for the muslim umma which in turn also became the foundation for the tablighi jamaat the school this school of thought was also supported by the regime in saudi arabia which took over from the ottoman empire in 1932 and became the rulers of saudi arabia saudi arabia became the prominent promoter of this ideology throughout the world because the wahhabi school of thought had also been created by saudi arabia on the same values of opposing the sufi masses they could achieve this because uh people from all over the world would visit uh saudi arabia to perform hajj and umrah and it was very easy for them to promote uh and push people toward this fundamental islamic uh, uh ideology of hate in 1926 molana ilyas was uh, went on a pilgrimage to saudi arabia and after returning back started working for the development of tablighi jamaat the tablighi the tablighi jamaat uh, started receiving funds uh, funds from uh, saudi arabia from the year 1933 onwards the tablighi jamaat gained momentum on the ideology of a separate state for the muslims in india with the aim of preservation of muslim culture and society economy and commerce craft and industry and uh, importance of social revolution of muslims to usher in a political revolution thus this ideology of the tablighi jamaat was in favor of a two nation theory and it's therefore its claim to be a political collapses from this theory uh with the saudi arabia fundings and some internal political movement fundings the tablighi jamaat started construction uh, constructing uh, madrasas where they started to poison the brains of the muslim youth who followed them various law enforcing agencies have reported their involvement in terror, uh, terrorist and fundamentalist uh, ideology and acting upon their reports the tablighi jamaat has been banned in some central asian countries such as uzbekistan kazakhstan tajikistan and russia whose governments see its puritanical preachings as an as extremist most uh, reports my friends are available on the world wide web and also on the sadf policy brief prepared beautifully by mr wolf on this very subject friends time has come to a full circle it is alarming that in 
Turkey has again started to project itself as a Muslim Khilafat movement leader, like it had done in 1919. This time, Turkey has roped in many religious leaders across the world to promote and propagate its agenda. I say this because uh, during the times of COVID in May 2020, Uh, during the month of Ramadan, many clergymen were seen promoting the drama series, uh, series Urtugul Ghazi, around the world on the pretext of pro- promoting Islamic culture. Later on, Turkey has uh, openly started to support Kashmiri youths involved in terrorism, and has said that it will send its trained mercenaries. to fight in kashmir along with the kashmiris this is really alarming we have to stay alert as the tablighi jamaat along with the wahhabi agenda with the help of turkey is going to be a vicious nexus against humanity friends we have to learn from our mistakes and pave way for love and peace for the future generations to come Sufi Islamic Board is a registered organization and has a presence pan India with lakhs of followers. We are fighting against the fundamental ideology through constitutional and democratic means. Our organization is working on issues which we uh, by which we can de-radicalize the youth of our nation and the world who are mostly misguided by the orthodox clergy to follow that their malign uh, ideology of hate we intend to achieve this goal by promoting and propagating sufi or spiritual means as an antidote against terrorism in the above effort we have worked on many issues some prominent among them are issue number 1 is a, an issue related to miraj rabbani from saudi arabia who had come to radicalize a youth from saudi arabia and had spoken against a very prominent sufi saint from asia hazrat khwaja garib nawaz of ajmer at that time we had formed and formed an organization with the name muslims against terrorism through which we had lodged a complaint against him and uh, after which he was do- uh, deported back to saudi arabia never to return back to india the second issue is of uh, zakir naik from mumbai we had started a movement against him among the masses after which uh, the indian government has banned him uh, throughout india and in recent times we have organized a nationwide agitation against popular front of india whose links have been established with ihh group of turkey in connection with various fundamental and terrorist promoting activities in india as our uh, honorable security advisor of india mr ajit doval in one of his speeches said that quote to fight terror is an abstract idea you don't fight terror you do so by degrading the terrorist and that's done by taking the uh, the weapons and their concepts unquote i think to fight uh, this uh, fundamental ideology of terror which is the ideology of hate we should join hands and work together to promote the ideology of peace and love which is reflected by the universal thoughts of sufism or spiritualism if we can promote and propagate values of peace inclusiveness and love through sufism or spirituality we would be able to not only uh, counter this fundamental ideology of hate we would also be able to show the world a new light of hope in which the masses would not only do away with the fundamental ideology of hate but also start to accept the ideology of love and peace i am thankful once again for the south asia democratic forum to invite sufi islamic board 
uh, in such a uh, well uh, organized webinar thank you thank you so much for this lesson uh, with such a clarity uh, we need you we need your organization thank in you. europe to um, to explain what Islam is uh, to the Europeans, and especially, you know, I wouldn't say for the normal European, but, you know, the words are, unfortunately, the ones who are at the top, because they don't know, the, they have the, the, not the faintest idea of what they speak about, uh, but they think that they know Islam, you know, especially when they are coming with the, from these Islamic studies that we know very well who's financing these Islamic studies. Um, uh, they are absolutely indoctrinated. They know nothing, but they believe they know a lot. You know, and they become really very problematic. Thank you so much. And now uh, we are um, sorry for taking more than uh, of your time than I, I would like to. But uh, we have now Professor Siddiqui. Uh, once again, I mean, we are delighted uh, that to have uh, your voice here. And uh, once again, please, those who can, Go and read your book. Your book um, uh, is uh, absolutely wonderful. Very well written. Um, I would like to write like the, the, the way you do, I have to confess. And uh, very, very instructive. Um, you know, I, uh, especially because I've, I, I've been a lot of times in Bangladesh and uh, I uh, never understood uh, Bangladesh so well uh, than after reading your book. Many congratulations. And so, without making you lose more time, the floor is yours. Please. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Am I clear? Thank you, uh, uh, Paula, for your uh, nice words about my book. And thank you, um, Dr. Siegfried, uh, and also SIDF, to invite me uh, on this very interesting and timely uh, webinar, and especially the topic is very uh, interesting. And uh, some another another reason is like uh, I did my PhD on this particular Islamic uh, group, and I had a comparison uh, between Bangladesh and, and the UK when I uh, studied. So I'll I'll briefly give some sort of uh, background, uh, and then I'll move into contemporary issue of uh, Tablighi Jamaat. So. Uh, when I started to study them, like I followed participant observation, like my background is anthropology. So I went with them. Like uh, I can see that there are many, a, a huge lot of misunderstanding about the group, um, not only in Bangladesh, but also other parts of the world. Uh, so I, from that perspective, I decided from, a, from an anthropological perspective. So what exactly motivate other people to join this huge movement? like why it has become a transnational Islamic movement. So in the beginning, like uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mansur clearly mentioned about uh, Maulana Ilyas, who was the initiator of this Tablighi uh, Jamaat movement in, in the beginning, beginning of 20th century. Sometimes uh, it evolved, sometimes uh, 1920s. Uh, the clear date and time is not very evident in history. And uh, one thing I'd like to say that uh, he was uh, Maulana Ilyas, according to my uh, studies with them, uh, he, he was motivated by Sufi uh, doctrine. And uh, if uh, uh, anyone looks into the, uh, uh, the activities that Tablighi Jamaat follows, you can find some of the uh, learning from the uh, Sufi uh, ideology practices in there. And uh, initially, the uh, main objective of him or of, of the Tablighi Jamaat is to like uh, initiate moral reform of individual. That's the basic uh, target he had. And also another famous phrase that many academics use that making good Muslim good Muslim within good. So uh, I, I took that title from uh, like becoming good Muslim for my book. So and another way they're trying to like purification of their soul. So these are the you know basic or fundamentals of uh, uh, bringing that uh, 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 movement in the beginning, and uh, and initially, you know that there is a community called Mayo or Mayo in, in Mewat in northern part of Delhi, and uh, they were not very religious at that point of time. So Maulana Ilya started to uh, experiment with them, like what would be the ways of bringing them back into the Islamic practices, and he then. Uh, 
so suggested and uh, and inspired them to come to mosque and spend time at mosque and and pray and from that perspective it started and then uh, uh, like uh, uh, the more and more people have started to come and join and uh, in the beginning he clearly mentioned that uh, it has to be apolitical within court and uh, someone also questioned like what what does it mean by apolitical in this current world and uh, uh, it's clearly known that in in present world or any time like being apolitical is again problematic and in in a very politically divided world nothing can be apolitical from that perspective you can say that tablighi uh, jamaat also cannot be apolitical and from that perspective like uh, uh, if you look into the uh, uh, expansion like uh, just right after the second world war uh, the movement started to uh, expand heavily not only south asia like it came to bangladesh pakistan and uh, the, it it got its way to to the uk and you know that uk is uh, serves as the european headquarter of the tablighi jamaat and then it it became uh, a transnational movement like uh, dr sigfrid mentioned that it's more than like nearly 200 you can find this movement in nearly 200 uh, countries at this moment so these are the background and if you look into this uh, influence in south asia including bangladesh you probably know that their annual congregation that uh, is known as istema uh, that uh, uh, held in like regularly held in uh, pakistan india uh, and bangladesh and in, in bangladesh they have like millions of people are gathering every year uh, uh, to attend this annual congregation so uh, that becomes another attraction for many people that they're coming from different parts of the country and different parts of the world to travel and uh, attend that annual uh, congregation and they have that feeling that uh, it's a congregation of meeting people together like-minded people and also uh, seek the mercy of allah so that was the background and if you now look into like a uh, recent debate about like their role about um uh jihad and terrorism or other activities now i'd like to uh define one thing like jihad like for example jihad is two two uh two aspects like if you were to de define it so uh one is like uh a fight against one one's own mind that uh islamic scholars mentioned that nafs and another one is like engaging into direct war like that you can say that fundamentalist and more like uh terrorist activities and uh, it has a debate like whether tablighi jamaat is a terrorist group or they in they're into a violent activities or not if you look into the like uh, barbara metcalf's work uh, uh uh she mentioned that like uh tablighi jamaat are into more into this moral form not in, into this uh, heavily engaged into violent activities or, uh, and that's why he say she said that uh, tablighi jamaat for tablighi jamaat jihad is to control the mind uh, from wrong doing and uh, that's what uh, metcap describes as personal purification and uh, that's the core element she saw uh see sorry and uh, uh, during my field work and to take collection with them so i had a sense a similar sense like uh the never and i uh, talk about anything that goes against the broader uh, idea of peace that's uh one point and uh and later on like let us say rightly mentioned that there are some uh, other activities going on for example if somebody comes to the bligi jamaat and leads it and then if uh, he or she is engaged into violent activities that will that be the responsibility for this uh, uh, group now uh, uh, if uh, dr sigrid rightly mentioned that a uh, couple of things that gave this movement a little bit of uh, like benefit of doubt for example uh, they do not have a coordinated structured way of maintaining their members so that means that uh, anyone can come and go for example they don't have any control over the members of their uh, tablighi group like anybody can come and join but recently this, due to this huge debate uh, what i observed from bangladesh that uh, they are now following a process of like informal way of uh, you know uh, reference a background check it's not very structured again 
But what they do, like any new person, if they, he or she wants to join that movement, they try to endorse, get an endorsement from the neighboring or elderly uh, Tablighi Jamaat leaders so that uh, they know about a particular uh, person. So uh, this is one thing. So that sometimes can, can go uh, in a wrong direction. Like uh, people like uh, someone can like, I, when I was reading the policy brief, I found that at one place, uh, 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 it was written that uh, this entire flexibility can be or sometimes being exploited by the global jihadist. Like uh, another study, like the, one of the pioneering study on Tablighi Jamaat that made by uh, Yuginder Sikhan, he mentioned that on the context of Bangladesh, like in 1971, there are many uh, Islamist militant group, they came into Tablighi Jamaat just to hide, uh, use as, as, a, as a hideout. Like they're trying to hide uh, and uh, uh, like, you know, uh, there is a controversy and also their controversial role in 1971 liberation war in Bangladesh. So they try to like modify some, I'm not saying everyone, but some of them, they're trying to uh, change their identity coming into this Tablighi Jamaat group. So that is another problem like that the Tablighi Jamaat as, a Islamic, as an Islamic movement has because anyone can come and exploit them. That's a, a very uh, important point. Like. Uh, we need to be remember. Uh, we need to remember that. And another thing is like um, sometimes we uh, hear about funds, like who are funding, right? So that's a very interesting debate. Like uh, during my data collection, I never uh, like uh, I, I did not find any evidence that they're funded by someone else. But sometimes, like you know, it's a local initiative, you can say, and they also want to claim that my pocket is my fund so uh, whenever i want to go i i i need to arrange that money and go but uh, in the uk what i have found that sometimes they uh, support students like they give discount when they want to go into a uh, uh, spiritual journey so as a student like phd student although i'm i, I was advanced student when i started to travel with them they gave a discount that kind of thing i observed and uh, um, another uh, point that I would like to make that uh, when I was um, interviewing with them, spending time with them, and I never found uh, anything like they're against Sufi ideology. So I, I've seen, I've got an idea or sense that they they try to you know uh, uh, balance Sufi ideology and traditional authentic Islamic ideology together, and they never uh, claim that it it is. Uh, Tablighi Jamaat is a version of Islam, or they never say uh, like this is a new Islam. So they say that we are also like one as uh, at one point um, Mr. Munson mentioned that uh, about our prophet. So Tablighi Jamaat they also claim that we are the followers of the prophet. So uh, they they follow every lifestyle and everything like the thing that we call Sunnah in Islam. So they're heavily into that. So. Uh, I think uh, another point uh, when I was looking at the policy brief and uh, Dr. Siegfried also mentioned, mentioned that uh, it is less known in the Europe. That's true. Despite like a huge transnational movement, since it is less known, that sometimes creates a debate whether uh, they're into uh, jihadist activity, they're into uh, terrorism or not. So my point is like, we need to have more studies on that. Or this particular group, although uh, you can find there are many studies are already conducted, but uh, not many academics uh, uh, from a like you know uh, value neutral perspective studied the movement. And there are some studies you can see clearly say that there is bias, bias from uh, both sides. For example, bias from the uh, uh, follower perspective, bias from against perspective. And another point that I would like to make, uh, make before I uh, conclude, that is uh, sometimes it is seen as secret society. But my observation, this is not like secret society. Any Muslim can go and join. Like you can see from the uh, flexible nature of the membership of the movement. So it, it's not like closed door kind of thing. Like if you look into the uh, annual congregation, anyone, it's, it, it takes place in the open place. So you can, any, anyone can go on there. Uh, and uh, listen to their speeches, like what they're uh, propagating. And uh, 
And the uh, final point that I would like to mention that definitely it can give some sort of ground for other people to exploit, I would say exploit, because uh, uh, it's very hard to give a concrete decision right now that uh, they, they, they officially promote, but their activities can be exploited by, or their platform can be exploited by many other people, and that can be a big problem for them. So that's why like, I'd like to uh, say that uh, we need more scientific evidence-based studies uh, to understand this uh, movement more. And then probably if we do not know the causes, root causes, then it would be very hard for the global community to uh, get the uh, you know prescription to avoid global jihad. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, very interesting uh, presentation of yours. Uh, I think that, uh, well, just in a few hours, I will get back to Bangladesh, you know, uh, <laughs> by by screen, because uh, yesterday, as you know, it was the national day, and it has to do a lot uh, with uh, uh, these Islamist organizations. And uh, as you write in your book, uh, the Tablighi was very important uh, in uh, after um, uh, this uh, uh, the independence uh, when. Uh, the perpetrators of the genocide, uh, their Islamist organizations were forbidden, and uh, they went to um, to uh, Tablighi Jamaat, and uh, this is something that you uh, you address uh, that uh, in your book. And that's uh, one of the interesting things. And I will come back to this uh, very very interestingly uh, with uh, an event that is going to be um, you know headed by uh, the His Excellency the Ambassador of uh, Bangladesh to the European Union later uh, in the day here in Brussels but now uh, and before you know allowing for for the debate let me tell you that I, I got some uh, um, very um, very good messages here uh, let me just say uh, Professor Nedushian Defense Department a great effort towards peace congratulations Congratulations to you. You have been speaking. Uh, the Dr. Uh, Nedun Shezian, I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing, uh, Perumal, um, whether it's Tabligi, uh, Dawhid, or any other Jamaat, it ultimately lies in revenge and violence for short goals in the name of pan Islamism. Uh, uh, do you suggest a common solution for all? Um, I think that uh, this was. Uh, 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 a question that was uh, addressed to Mr. Khan. So he, when uh, he now has the floor, he can come to this. And uh, uh, last but not least, uh, no, 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 two others, two others. Oh, here they are coming more and more. Um, Sukash Sharma, uh, hope Mr. Mansur Khan will expose the myth of a political nature, uh, nature of Tablighi Jamaat. Uh, Dr. Pernal, uh, Mr. Mansur, Mansur Khan is really giving a clear insight into the issues. That's directed to you. Um, there are um, also some Thank positive you. comments in Hindi on Mr. Khan's presentation. I am informed, but uh, my Hindi, I'm very sorry. Mm. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, it's an experience. <laughs> but my, my Bengali Thank is no better. Sir. It's no better than my Hindi. Uh, and you do, uh, you know, the same. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm uh, very illiterate uh, from this point of view. So I, we, uh, we cannot follow in, in India. I'm so sorry. Um, so we are going now, uh, uh, you know, Mr. Khan, you were the one who had most of the questions. Um, uh, perhaps we can start by you, of course, that I will uh, give the floor to the other speakers. But perhaps, uh, uh, yes, now the floor could be yours, please. Uh, regarding uh, uh, Mr. Siddiqui's uh, claim that all the groups uh, in Islam claim to be following Prophet Muhammad. Yes, absolutely. Nobody is going to uh, uh, purchase poison. All, all the poison is being sold uh, uh, in a bottle of uh, honey. So uh, uh, we will we'll have to make a thorough study in this regard whether what we are buying is it, it is really honey or or is it poison in the disguise of honey all uh, all groups in islam 
they claim to be following prophet muhammad and others but uh, as i said in my uh, presentation then who were the followers uh, who had attacked prophet muhammad who were the followers who had attacked uh, uh, his grandsons they were not uh, non muslim non muslims they were in fact all muslims so the, this perspective will have to be uh, understood whether uh, which part of islam represents peace and which part of re, re, uh, islam does not i think if we uh, hold some seminars on this uh, on this issues uh, worldwide then i think we would be able to clear this point of uh, islamic terrorism which is a hot debate nowadays uh, and uh, most probably people who do not uh, uh, understand the topic fully they come to a conclusion that all islam is the same in fact i i don't see uh, any religion in which some sects are not uh, violent but any religion which preaches violence is not a religion at all that's what i want to say and secondly secondly uh one thing more i i want to say over here uh the wahhabi the salafi the tablighi ideology they have a slogan uh, to which they act upon and the slogan is that islam is a religion of peace either you accept it or we will kill you is it a religion how can we say it is a religion and to counter this type of an ideology you uh, and we we should get together to uh, propagate the uh, ideology of peace so that this subject may be cleared in the minds of the people it is not it is not that uh, people are uh, just acting on the whims it is not like that but the true face of islam is sufism which has not been propagated at, at all in in the early 19th century all the groups which were forming throughout the world were to malign the teachings of the sufi saints how can we say that uh, 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 tablighi jamaat also had uh, some influence from the sufi uh, uh, background in fact they had built their uh, markaz uh, just at the gate of hazrat nizamuddin aulia because people used to go there and visit this place in lakhs in those days so they they, 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 they this cult was developed uh, at the doorstep of sufism i think uh, we should uh, do more research and uh, uh, on the subject and uh, we should come forth with such uh, webinars and uh, presentations before the general masses so that uh, the difference between the ideology of peace and the ideology of hate could be exposed fully thank you sir thank you thank you so much uh, we still have a, 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 another co a comment uh, yeah dr zikfid wolf uh, made me decide that he wants to speak there is um uh, well uh, something uh, that uh, Uh, is addressed uh, directly to uh, Professor Siddiqui. So um, I will read it after uh, Dr. Wolf will take the floor. Please, Dr. Wolf, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you very much. I just want to, to add one or two, two comments uh, to Professor Siddiqui's uh, presentation and uh, to the question raised by the audience. Um, regarding the secrecy, um you're absolutely right when you're on the grassroots level there's a incredible kind of openness yeah and and you can't talk about a lack of transparency and secrecy there 
but I was more focusing on the leadership structure. Yeah, And there are a lot of issues which is unclear. For example, why certain countries uh, don't have a uh, own uh, leadership presence yeah, or center. Yeah? How it is, for example, in Germany, or they don't have to say anything. Um, this is one thing. And then um, I think this is a very good point made by uh, our audience um, regarding the question or the search quest for a common solution for all. Um, I don't think, though, that there is a common solution for all. This is mainly due because of the nature of the different political systems we have on the globe. We can already see that there are a major, uh, major spread between authoritarian regimes and, and uh, uh, Europe. I mean, Europe until now has not at all <laughs> something what we can call a solution, but we have an authoritarian response already. We know how the Chinese are dealing with Islamist group, and we know how Russian and some of most of the Central Asian states uh, deal with the Tabligi Chamat, so just ban it. I don't think this is the right way to ban this organization until now, and we don't have any proof uh, of concrete uh, issues. Um, and in this context, I want to refer again to Professor Siddiqui regarding your elaboration on, on the different ways of jihad. Um, this brings me to a debate which is also linked with Tabligi Chamat when it comes to the use of violence. I think the notion what in particular happens here in Europe um, to differentiate different Muslim groups based on their approach towards the use of violence, I think this is quite uh, limited. Yeah? You have to see, even if you appreciate violence or not, all of these groups, of these radicalized Islamist groups, have the same overall goals. Yeah? They want to have an Islamist regime. They want to have a caliphate. They want to have an in universal uh, valid uh, Sharia law. Yeah, and they want to have an Islamic uh, transition of our societies. So, as such, there is not much different when it comes to the major goals, which is a core threat for our European values. So, this is just one dimension which I want want, want to add. Um, and when it comes to the uh, um, our political stand of the Tabligi Chamat, I mean, when an organization aims at the complete transition of a society, this is a political message. So there is already a program in their DNA of this organization. So as such, I can't think about uh, 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 in terms of our political when it comes to Tabligi Chamat. Thank you. I think your mic. Um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, just, just uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor uh, Siegfried, uh, doc, Dr. Wolf. Um, and uh, I have here a message, a message to you, uh, um, directed to you. But even before that, well, you know, uh, of course, the jihad can be seen in a lot of ways. I mean, I, I can as well uh, be making, you know, a, a big, um, a big uh, uh, development on how the Crusaders um, had uh, the spiritual dimension of Crusader that obviously existed, you know. But um, you know, uh, of course, the religion debate is a very important one. We have a, a very important religious leader with us. I have all my respect for the, all the religious people, but uh, um, you know there are certain things that are certainly, uh, uh, I mean, um, I'm not uh, going to swallow, um, and that I know very well what they mean and what are they hiding behind. Uh, and I think, uh, Professor Siddiqui, I mean, I read your book. Uh, your book is, is excellent, is excellent. Everything is there. Um, so uh, I would say that um, from this point of view, uh, things are, are absolutely clear. But still, uh, we have from uh, uh, a member of the Sufi Islamic Board, uh, Z Zindabad, uh, Tabligi Yazidi is a symbol of Islam, uh, which has nothing to do with us. We will not allow any fragmentation and separatist agenda to succeed on India soil. 
it is our moral and national duty to um, ban PFI, uh, I suppose that's the, the front you just uh, spoke uh, a while ago. Um, and this is uh, yeah, to Professor Siddiqui. But please, the floor is yours, Professor Siddiqui. Uh, thank you. Thank you again. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'll just make a couple of general comments. So, um, I think the last question is not uh, directly linked with my work. Uh, I also completely agree uh, that uh, 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 true Islam uh, eventually will last. True version, uh, if you if you if you uh, allow me to say in that manner. So another thing, like. Um, uh, also, I'd like to uh, think carefully, like not to generalize everything together. For example, uh, if I say that Tablighi, Salafi, or other form or uh, uh, ISIS are the same, then probably uh, it would be a little difficult to read and understand each of the movement. That one point. And another point is uh, 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 you also have to think about each of the country, they have different faces. For example, in, in Bangladesh, Tablighi Jamaat has never been uh, involved into any sort of uh, you know, uh, violent activities. That doesn't mean that any member of that particular group in, in Europe uh, cannot, uh, will not do that. But in Europe has a different uh, scenario that I, I also completely agree with uh, the group that uh, uh, the, like transforming the society and uh, uh, and working for like you know uh, Sharia law and uh, uh, promote violent activities is not ex uh, accepted or expected as well. So, uh, but my understanding uh, working with that particular group, uh, I found that they never you know like publicly. Maybe I, I do not know what goes on into their uh, closed door, like you mentioned, like when they discuss in the. Uh, um, in their closed, uh, very small uh, secret group. I, I don't have much idea about that, but in publicly, uh, um, they never promote that. Their target is to like establish an environment for the Muslim to uh, practice their Islam. And another point that I would like to mention here that they, their purpose is to like, you know, preach only among the Muslim. They do not want to uh, want other to be converted. They do not work on uh, like conversion into like uh, or preach others to convert into uh, Islam. That's another thing. Like you need to uh, remember that, and that also you can from that you can get the approach the way they work. So uh, I do agree. Uh, 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 like if uh, if they want to transform the entire society, entire uh, political system, that that's that's not a way of doing that. But uh, we also need to be careful when we uh, state anything too general. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, we are approaching uh, uh, the, the end of our webinar. Um, thank you for this. Uh, these last words. It's true. I mean, um, I. Uh, uh, I mean, I did read as well. You know, uh, although I think I learned much more about Islam by. I, as I ever said, you know, the best thing that ever happened for my, uh, you know, for my knowledge was to get lost in Iraq. I did get lost in Iraq uh, uh, in 2004. Uh, uh, it would uh, it nearly ended in tragedy, but uh, it didn't. Uh, I'm here. Um, I'm still here. A lot of people would like not to, me to be here, but I am. Uh, <laughs> uh, and that was the school I uh, never had others. But, you know, I did read something and uh, getting your words, you know, the, um, the complexity of Islam, you know, the current, I mean, it's absolutely, I, I get lost there. You know, I just uh, try to get uh, myself there and, and I think I get lost because it, it's absolutely, you know, uh, something uh, with, a, with a big variety is, uh, is fascinating from, uh, from several perspectives. It is, I'm not at all a specialist on the religion. I, I know more about the political movements that use the religion and some of the times <laughs> because I have been going through uh, what they mean, 
I, I am, uh, uh, of course, very, very uh, in agreement uh, with the last words of Professor Stick. Of course, they're, they're, these are completely different uh, things, you know. Uh, um, they are completely, of course, not completely. <laughs> they have some things in common. But uh, there are things that are different that we have to understand uh, where um, where the difference uh, where the difference lies um, and uh, we uh, you know one of the best research I've ever seen on uh, uh, jihadist groups because I for a variety of reasons I stand for the term jihadist groups in in, um, in uh, Pakistan was exactly explaining that there were people you could find uh, in the beginning of the week, in uh, the jihadi group number one and would end the week in the jihadi group number two and would come back to the jihadi group number one next week. <laughs> That's something, you know, that uh, it's one of the various things that uh, leads uh, the Westerners not to understand. You know, They don't know what they are dealing with. They come from another culture and they uh, make a lot of mistakes. I have to tell you that whenever I want to learn something uh, on Islam, uh, not only on Islam, but on, on your culture, I have to to go, you know, to your countries. Um, I have to be with people like you, professors like you. Uh, you know, uh, go to uh, to Iraq, for instance. That's where I learned the most of uh, of what I know in our day. Um, and uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, when I see people here in Europe that uh, have a degree on Islamic studies, I mm, in Europe I always say, well, um, I am a bit afraid of what's coming out of there. You know. Uh, and I do think that we need uh, uh, people like uh, Mr. Khan to come to Europe and to explain uh, what uh, a bit of what uh, of Islam. I, I felt the same, you know, in countries like Uzbekistan, which is a tremendously rich culture, uh, tremendous teachings to give us. Well, uh, but this is it. Um, we put this on the agenda. Uh, Tablig Jamat has to be on the European political agenda. We put it there. Um, we did get a lot of very angry reactions, I have to tell you. Uh, and of course, most of them dissimulated. Well, but that's life. Um, life is full of these issues. Uh, it cannot go otherwise. But I'm very proud of what we did. Uh, the main builder of uh, our uh, policy brief is here, is Dr. Siegfried Wolf. Thank you so much, Siegfried. You were fantastic uh, in what you did. Um, thank you so much to all of you that uh, followed us uh, in this debate. Um, Mr. Khan, Professor Siddiqui, everyone, and uh, um, inshallah, things uh, will go better in 2021 to everyone, and most in particular to uh, the followers of the Islamic religion that I am caring a lot for. Thank you very much uh, for your participation. Looking forward to cooperate with you in the next occasion. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.